Hi, this is Tim here, G4WIM, and today I'd like to show you a little video I've made of a rotator controller to replace uh, my Yesu G800, as you can see here. Although it could be used and adapted to, to replace any other type of controller with some minor hardware and firmware changes. So basically, the G800 has the usual Yesu display, uh, left and right buttons. Uh, a rather crude preset heading control and a speed control and a start button and an LED to show you when you're in overlap mode of 450 degrees. Um, some Yesu controllers only have uh, left right buttons and that's about it. So I took this as the starting point and designed this this unit here which is a processor controlled version. It uses an Arduino board uh, AT Mega 2560 and it has a little printer circuit board shield uh, designed to fit on top of it and that drives an LCD screen like that. So I'll give you a run through of uh, how it works and then I'll show you some internal pictures of how it's built. It has um, a display, a three and a half inch display, uh, 480 by 320 pixels, on which it displays the current azimuth heading uh, with the blue arrow here and 45 degrees. The desired heading here, uh, 91 uh, degrees, or is it 81, 81 degrees in green, which can be changed by twiddling the knob here. It also has four presets which are non-volatile, currently programmed to 35, 89, 97 and 310 degrees. Then you have some manual control buttons clockwise and counterclockwise and it's currently in south stop mode. That means that it'll rotate from south all the way around this way and stop or go that way around south stop. We can change it to north stop very easily by just pressing the button there and it'll go into north stop mode. And it shows us such there. And if I press it again, it goes in the south stop back to where we are. Where. There's also a button on the back which allows it to do a calibration, automatic calibration, where it figures out where north and south stops are on the rotator and calibrates itself accordingly, such that you land up with a, re a repeatability of about one degree or so, give or take, mechanical backlash. And we have an LED here to show when it's in overlap mode and it comes up in red in uh, overlap mode as well. There's also a screen saver a function which I'll, which I'll show you later and uh, serial commands to send it to whatever heading you like and to change uh, the screen saver functions. Right, okay, let's make it do something. Um, let's twiddle it around here. Let's send it to a heading of 160 degrees. And it's gonna go clockwise to get there because that's, that's the shortest path without going through any of the stops. And what will happen is when I press that button, the clockwise light will come on. It'll be dim for about half a second as the rotator is going slowly. Then it'll get brighter and go up to full speed. And when it gets closer, it'll slow back down and stop. So I'll just press the button like that. Um, uh, like that, sorry. And that'll set it going. Like that. And I'll get closer, it'll stop. We're using um, a, a local rotator which can turn pretty quickly for the purposes of, of this demonstration. If I press this, this button here, clockwise, that drives it clockwise fairly slowly, and we've just gone into overlap mode now because we're coming close to the end of the 450 degrees, which is there. And if I've driven it manually into overlap mode, um, I can make it go automatically further into overlap mode like that. But eventually if I go beyond the true mechanical end stop, which is just there, 274 degrees, now it's going to have to go all the way back round automatically, like that. Okay, and any time I can just abort that and it'll stop it. Um, if I want to get to somewhere quickly on, on the uh, sort of heading, pressing these buttons manually would take a long, long time because it goes qu quite slowly. So it's, it, it's better to set it like that let it zoom around to approximately where you want it to be. Of course, I can, I can actually change this on, on the fly as well. I'm going to have it stop in there. And then um, when I've got there, now I can take over and do it manually, should I so desire. 
So that's using it um, locally. If I wanted to change one of the presets, so as I want to set a heading of 81 degrees into P4, I dialed it up here on the rotary control and press P4, and that will write it in, it will show right. Right P4, so that's now put the uh, sort of current setting into P4 ready, and if I press the button it will go and do that to where, to where it was, or if I take it further around and do it again, I'll drive it to there, and again you'll see it slow down when it gets close. And I'll just select P4 now, and I read P4, and off it goes. Of course that's all, all doing it locally, if I was to send it a, a serial command, I'll send it a serial command of uh, requesting 150 degrees, so i just type in here, R155. I've got a serial connection plugged into the background, so that'll into the back, so that'll drive it around, and off we go. And that was doing it uh, from the remote control. Um, the screensaver, to get into screensaver mode, I press one of these buttons, and then press the, ear, the other button, like that. And you'll see at the moment, it'll say um, the screensaver is disabled. However, if I twiddle this knob here, I can set the screen saver to whatever value I like in 10 second increments up to a maximum of 10,000 seconds but I'll just set it to 10 seconds that's uh, good enough for this demonstration so I'll do that, press the button, saving and exiting so now I have the screen saver function going and if I don't do anything else um, after 10 seconds or it will go into screen saver mode and you'll see the screen saver text come up and it just jumps around the screen like that until I press one of the buttons or send it a serial command. So I just twiddle this around and it comes up out of screensaver mode and we're back to there again. Um, to the, that's about it. Um, I'll show you the internal workings. Uh, I'll just unplug the serial connection here and um, tilt it over. Like, um, like that, and now you can see the uh, circuit board. I'm just going to zoom out slightly, slightly. This is the circuit board, the LCD mounted, and you'll notice I mounted the AT Mega back to front uh, like this, so such that I can plug the USB port into, into the back of it uh, up here easily and the LCD is mounted with a small wiring loom onto the board itself that's it and like I say hopefully it will be all published in a magazine most likely Radcom in the not too distant future and um, that's the circuit board in the CAD system, done by KiCAD, ready to go. Right, okay, that's about it. Thank you and goodbye.